All right, guys, so you have your two separate drawings. Now it is time to make your abdominograph. Step one, start with one piece of paper and using a ruler, go at the very top and mark one inch ticks all the way across your page. And slide your ruler down and do the same exact thing on the bottom. By the way, these are two blank pieces of paper. These are not your drawings. Repeat this step with top and bottom one inch mark ticks on a second blank piece of paper. Step two, you are going to take either of those two marked papers. We are going to do this to both and you're going to take, what is this tool? Yep, a needle tool. Using that handy ruler once again, line those tick marks up so that you're getting a straight up and down line and using that needle tool, drag it ever so gently but also firmly across the page. What you're trying to do is score the paper. This is going to make it very easy to get a nice crisp fold. Do this across all of the tick marks that you have created on both pieces of paper. I definitely recorded myself folding along those score lines for the first time, but I guess my memory was full, so the camera stopped recording. So sorry, you guys missed the magic. Uh, but anyway, once you are done scoring all across those two pages, go ahead and fold your paper in that fan-like alternating fashion. With the score marks, the paper basically folds itself. I'm also going to want these two papers to become one long fan-like piece of paper, so just take those two edges and overlap them with a piece of glue so that they stay together. Okay, technically folding was step three, so step four, put your fan-like paper to the side, and now we're gonna go back to our drawings. And on the back of your paper, do just as you did before and mark one inch tick marks across the top and bottom of the page. Connect those tick marks with a nice solid pencil line. We will be cutting along those. What I find helpful as well is numbering each section when you're done, depending on the size of your paper, you can get anywhere between 8 and 12 marks. Step 5. As much as this might pain some of you, cut those beautiful drawings into one inch strips carefully along the lines you made. Step 6. Now we finally get to see this agamograph coming together. Take the one drawing that you now have cut into strips, and remember, we numbered the back. The only thing is that uh, number one that we started with is actually going to be the last one because remember the paper was flipped upside down. Uh, so what we're going to do is starting with uh, either 12 or the last number you had, you're going to start gluing those strips down from left to right. This part is important that you make sure that each strip goes in the appropriate place because that is how we're going to make sure that those drawings are seen as they should be and equally as important as making sure those strips are going on in the correct numerical order is making sure that they're all going on the same side of those folded peaks. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm labeling all of the left side of those paper peaks so that I know that this drawing is only going on the left side. And down here, you can see I'm labeling this side right. That's where the second drawing will go. Please also pay attention and make sure you're gluing down your strips the correct orientation, so not upside down. And that's pretty much it. Once you've fully paid attention to what you're doing, you will end up with all of your strips being glued down and you have half of this done. And your last step is repeating steps four and five with your second drawing. So once again, marking one inch ticks across your page, cutting it into one inch strips, making sure to keep everything labeled, and then gluing your second paper down onto the remaining folds of your agamograph. One thing I like to do once I'm done is just refold everything since I kind of flattened it as I was gluing, let it spring back into shape, and then you have your completed agamograph. <laughs>